All the links for this video will be found in the description box below. Welcome back to our study of the book of Revelation. Today we are going to be in chapter 7 and I just want to thank you so much for continuing on in this study. If you found this video somehow by chance, uh, know that we have already gone through chapters 1 through 6 on our YouTube channel, Encouraging Women for Christ. So go back to the channel, check it out, start at chapter 1 and then go all the way through and catch up with us here in chapter 7. So let's look at chapter 7 of Revelation. I'm in the New King James Version. Please feel free to pull out your Bible and follow along with us. After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one can number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders, and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white, white robes and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will dwell with them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living waters, living fountains of waters and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Let's pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your powerful word. We thank you so much for the word of truth. We thank you so much, Jesus, that we are here with you studying the truth of your word today in Revelation chapter 7. And I just pray that your truth would go out and we would understand the will of God through this chapter today for us. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are so glad to be continuing our study and today we are in chapter 7 of the book of Revelation. And so let me again remind you of the timeline now of the study of our book. So chapter 7 now puts us right into the beginning of the tribulation. The tribulation began in chapter 6 and now we are right at the beginning of the tribulation when these events happen and we have the 144,000 sealed from the tribes, all the tribes of Israel, and we have this multitude from the great tribulation as a result of the sealed of Israel. And so those are the events we are going to focus on today in this part of the book.
Um, we have 144,000, that's gonna be one of our main numbers. And we also have another um, worship of God in sevens. Um, in in verse, verse 12, it says, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So there's another sevenfold praise of God. So 144,000 and a sevenfold praise of God before um, before the throne room of God of those who have been called out of the great tribulation who have been rescued out. So that's the theme of today. We're gonna dive right into our book. And I just wanna remind us of our memory verse as we go through these chapters in Revelation. Remember in chapter six, we talked about having this memory verse, Ezekiel 33, 11, which is say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? And I think chapter 7, this is the most applicable memory verse to have for chapter 7. And I want you, if you haven't already, you can write Ezekiel 3311 on an index card right here like I have. And you can have it right in front of you as we study, especially as we go through the tribulation from chapter 6, which we already talked about, all the way through until the end of chapter 18 that is the seven year tribulation and this verse is a great verse to have in front of us to help remind us of what God's character is during the tribulation he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked would turn from his way and live and you know what's so wonderful about chapter 7 that's exactly what we are going to see happens to both the 144,000 who are sealed and the multitude out of the great tribulation so let's um, look first in detail with the sealed of Israel, who they are. So let's back up and look at verse 1 again and see what happens. So if we, if we even back up a little bit further than that, in chapter 6 we saw the opening of the first six seals. So we saw the opening of the first six seals. The seventh seal will be opened in chapter 8 at the right beginning of chapter 8. But after the opening of the first six seals, we see what happens here in heaven and we get this this view of heaven and what is happening before these are these 144,000 are sealed so it says in verse 1 7 1 after these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth or on the sea or on any tree then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. So there is a pause here between the opening of the six seals before he opens the seventh seal, that there is a pause, a holding back, so to speak, from these four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. Now the four corners of the earth are probably the four directions, uh, north, east, south, and west. Um, that's probably what it's referring to here. And they're holding back this judgment until the 144,000 are sealed from God. Okay, so let's pick up in verse four. And who are these who are sealed? All right, um, and it, I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000, and look in verse 4, of all the tribes of the nation of Israel. All the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. So these 144,000 are 144,000 Jews who are sealed by God. They are a special uh, group of Jews that have been called by God, that have been sealed by God, that have been set apart by God for just such a time as this in the beginning of the tribulation. And they are going to have a very, very special role in the tribulation. And they have been chosen 
by the lamb for this role. So um, let's first take a look and discuss about the 12 tribes of Israel. You may not uh, be familiar with the 12 tribes of Israel. It started back in Genesis um, where we understood that Abraham was called out to form a nation and Abraham's son was Isaac and Isaac's son was Jacob and Jacob had 12 sons and out of those 12 sons came the 12 tribes of Israel. So it went Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and then all the 12 sons came from Jacob. So let's go ahead and turn back to Genesis chapter 35 and we'll look at verse 22 through 26. So Genesis 35 verse 25 and we will look at verse uh, 22 through 26, the second half of verse 22 through 26 of Genesis 35 and it says, Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's maidservant, were Dan and Naphtali. And the sons of Zilpah, Leah's maidservant, were Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Paddan Aram. So Jacob had two wives, Leah and Rachel, and he also had uh, two um, maidservants, uh, one Rachel's maidservant and one Leah's maidservant. So four women total birthed the, the 12 sons of Jacob, and that is what makes up the 12 tribes of Israel. So therefore, every person who has a Jewish background is from one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so if we go back to Revelation chapter 7, um, we take a look at these 44, um, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel, and I'm in verse 4, and it says that 12,000 were sealed from each of the 12 tribes. So an even 12,000 sealed from each of the 12 tribes, which makes up 144,000. And I think that this is absolutely amazing because it shows that God knows his people so well. He knows his people perfectly. He knows during the tribulation, even if the Jewish person himself did not know which tribe he was from, God already knew which tribe he was from. And it just shows God's love and care and understanding of his own people called by his name. And so let's um, see what do the 144,000 do and why are they sealed during this time? Because this is really, really important. Remember, once we get into the tribulation, the church has been removed from the earth. The church was raptured up in Revelation chapter 4. And so the church is no longer on the earth to share the gospel, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And so if we look at our memory verse again in Ezekiel 33, 11, where God's heart is that he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked would turn from his way and live, well, with the church removed from the earth, how are people going to know the gospel of Jesus Christ to be able to turn from their way, turn from their wicked way, and put their faith and trust in Jesus during these seven years? Well, that's exactly why God called, God called this 144,000, this special group from Israel out because he is going to use them to be great evangelists all over the earth. Now, you say, Courtney, how do you know that? And I'll, um, I'll show you. We are actually going to see the 144,000 again in chapter 14, and we will see um, the outcome of their walk with God. But let's go to Revelation chapter 14 right now, and I just want to show you two verses, verses 4 and 5. So turn, to rep, turn ahead to Revelation chapter 14, and let's look at verses 4 and 5. And it describes a little bit more detail about the 144,000. 
So it says, Revelation 14 verses 4 through 5 about them. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were redeemed from among men, being firstfruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without, without fault before the throne of God. And so these are the ones that says that follow the Lamb wherever He goes. I love that verse. That is one of my favorite verses in this whole book. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Now, if they are going to follow Jesus, what are they going to do to uh, be obedient to him and follow him. Well, we know what Jesus' heart is in what's called the Great Commission. Before Jesus ascended to the throne room of God, after his death on the cross for our sins, his burial, and then his resurrection from the dead, he ascended to the throne room of God where he's seating at the right hand of the Father. Um, before he did that, he gave his disciples a command and it was called the Great Commission. And so let's take a look at Matthew chapter 28 and see what Jesus' words are in the Great Commission and how we can apply this to the 144,000 and how they follow the Lamb wherever He goes. So let's open to Matthew chapter 28 and understand what the mission is of the 144,000. So I'm in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20, and it says, And Jesus came and spoke to to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even to the end of the age so this great commission is how the 144,000 follow the Lamb wherever He goes. It is also how no lie was found in their mouths or is found in their mouths because they are blameless. They are blameless because they are speaking the Word of God as truth. They are going out to all the nations and they are making disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ to all the nations. And they are teaching them everything that God had commanded in His Word. Um, it is a powerful, powerful group of evangelists, quite possibly the most powerful group of evangelists that ever, ever lived um, since Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins and rose again to give us new life in Him. This is a powerful group. I almost want to think it's like 144,000 Apostle Pauls spread all over the earth to share the gospel during this part of the tribulation where people need to have the hope of Jesus Christ. Remember the church has been removed. There is no one to share the gospel until God sends a new group of 144,000 out to share the gospel. So let's continue with Revelation chapter 7 and let's see what the fruit of their labor is. So I'm in Revelation chapter 7 and I'm going to pick up in verse 9. It says, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And so, out of their preaching, look at the multitude of people that come to know Jesus during this part of the tribulation, this first half of the tribulation. A multitude which no one can number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palm branches in their hands. Okay, and going on to verse 11, it says, All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. And here is our sevenfold blessing, um, praise of God that happens from the multitude out of the great tribulation. It says, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. 
Okay, so I'm going to pick up in verse 13 here, and how do I know that this uh, is the multitude out of the great tribulation? Well, the wonderful thing about the Word of God is it speaks crystal clear in this section that this group is out of the great tribulation. So picking up in verse 13, it says, Then one of the elders answered, um, saying to me, and he, one of the elders said to me, who is John, because John's writing this down, the Apostle John, who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? And I said to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. There is absolutely no doubt where this group of people came from. They came out because of the preaching of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists spread all over the earth to share the gospel, to obey the Great Commission, to follow the Lamb wherever he goes because no lie was found in their mouths. They were blameless. They shared the gospel and look at the fruit of their labor. And it says, and they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. I'm going to pause right there. Let's look again at verse, um, let's look at verse 14. It says specifically, they made and they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. They made their robes white in the blood of the lamb. Isn't that an interesting concept to think of? How do you make a white robe by blood? Um, that's because it, it's a way of saying that they put their faith and trust in Jesus' sacrifice for their sins on the cross and his resurrection from the dead to give him to give them new life. That's the good news. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so whether you are in the church age um, or whether you are in the tribulation time, um, the gospel still saves the same exact way in the tribulation as it did in the church age. The gospel saves. And the gospel is the good news that Jesus went to the cross. He died for our sins. He rose again from the dead to give us new life. And if you put your faith and trust in Jesus, you will be saved too. For the Bible says, for all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So they, they made their robes white and the blood of the lamb meant that they believed that the blood of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for their sins was sufficient for God and that they could trust in that for their sins. And that is how they are made white. They are made pure by the blood of the lamb, the perfect sacrifice of our Passover lamb, Jesus Christ our Lord, was sufficient um, as it was at the cross. When he was up on the cross and he sacrificed himself, he said, it is finished because it was a sufficient, perfect sacrifice that satisfied the wrath of God. He took our wrath and he gave us, everyone who puts their faith and trust in Jesus, his righteousness, and that's why they're clothed in white. Okay, picking up in verse 15. Therefore they are before the throne of God and they and serve him day and night in his temple and he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. So they are in the temple now in heaven and they are serving God day and night. If they're clothed in white and they're serving him day and night, that gives us the picture of like the Old Testament priests who were clothed in white and they served in the tabernacle during Moses' time or in the temple during Solomon's time, King Solomon, they were the priests were clothed in white and they ministered in the temple, which it was the place where God dwelt during that time. His Shekinah glory dwelt in the Holy of Holies between the cherubim and the Ark of the Covenant, um, both in the tabernacle and in the temple during Solomon's time. God was there and they ministered um, to um, God in the temple then and it was a picture of how ministry was going to be by the priests um, 
uh, in this case, the, this group of priests is from the Great Tribulation and how they serve the Lord in heaven in the temple of God and they minister to him day and night. So the Old Testament priest was a foreshadowing or a picture of what was going to happen after Jesus came and all his people who put their faith and trust in him, what their uh, ministry would be in heaven in the temple. They would be like priests. They would be priests of our God. And it says in verse 14, they shall, ne they shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shall, shall Excuse me. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to fount to living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Clearly, this group of every nation and tribe and people and tongue went through quite a lot in the in the tribulation period. They had a difficult time. They hungered. They thirst. They were uh, struck with heat. But God now is their shepherd in the midst of the throne he leads them to fountains of living waters and god will wipe away every tear from their eyes they went through such a painful time but god took care of them he sheltered them he shepherded them he took care of them when they got up to heaven and i believe even before that he took care of them because jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever and while we, while we look at toward closing out this particular teaching, as I look at 17, it reminds me of one of the most famous Psalms, Psalm 23 of David, that he wrote about the Lord being our shepherd. So let's turn to Psalm 23 right now, and we will read that, and then we will close out our teaching for today. So Psalm 23. says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Isn't it just so wonderful to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a good shepherd and he shepherds his people, he shelters his people, even as they go through this part of the tribulation. First he pulls, he seals the 144,000 of his people on their foreheads. He protects them, he seals them, and they belong to him and they go out and follow him wherever he goes. And as a result of following the lamb wherever he goes and the preaching of the gospel, the fruit of their labor is this multitude out of the great tribulation from every tribe, nation, language, and tongue. And they're standing before the throne room of God and the Lord is their shepherd. Hallelujah. Well, I just want to ask you, is the Lord your shepherd? Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for salvation? Just like the multitude out of great, the great tribulation listened to the preaching of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists, are you, have you made the decision to make Jesus your good shepherd? I want to invite you to do that today. He is a good shepherd. He listened to his character. He um, leads them to living waters and he wipes away every tear from their eyes. I just invite you to put your faith and trust in Jesus and he will take care of you. He will shepherd you. He will guide you. He will wipe away every tear from your eye and he will, you will have a place with him for all eternity in heaven. Thank you so much. Let's pray and we'll close out. Gracious and heavenly father, 
We praise you so much for the preaching of the 144,000 during the tribulation and the multitude that will be saved because of their preaching. Lord, we just ask you right now that you help us to continue to understand this wonderful book and the mercy of God we see all throughout, even though the, the tribulation is a very, very difficult and terrible time for seven years on this earth, we continue to see the mercy of God and His wonderful character to save because that is what He is. He is salvation. And we praise you for what only you can do to save. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We will see you next time.